Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. Today we're going to be doing some calculations involving isotopic abundance and molar mass. So we've looked so far at the idea that a mass spectrometer and a mass, the mass spectrum that it produces um, is a useful way that chemists can, um, can determine exactly how abundant each isotope is for a given element. We're going to um, walk through how we can actually use that information to calculate the average molar mass for a given element. So I'm going to just go through a couple of practice um, calculations to get you started. Okay, so the first one um, involves looking at an element which has, uh, so where we've got three isotopes, 24, 25 and 26 atomic mass units. And so that then the isotope with 20, uh, atomic mass of 24, relative atomic mass, um, is 78.7%. 25 is 10.3%. And 26 is 11.2%. Okay, so then what we need to do is we need to, to work out the molar mass based on this data. Okay, so what we're going to do here now well one thing that, that first for starters that we can um, we can work out is that the average molar mass is going to be somewhere between 24 and 26 okay so that's the first kind of gut feeling that you can actually you can work out where that must fall okay now what we the the easiest way to do this is to convert each of these percentage values out to a decimal okay so 0. 787, 0.103, and 0.112. And so what we're then going to do is that then we're going to multiply this abundance by the number by the atomic mass. So the average molar mass is going to be equal to 24 times 0 0.787 plus 25 times 0 0.103 plus 26 times 0 0.112. Okay, now you may well be wondering at this stage why you can't, to work out the average atomic mass that you can't just do 24 plus 25 plus 26 and divide it by 3. Okay, because that's normally how we would work out an average. But the reason that we do that is that um, um, is that, yeah the reason that we don't do that is that that, is, that approach assumes that each um, each mass comes in a, an equal frequency that you've got like one of each or the same amount of each but the reality is that because we have a different amount of each thing that you can't just assume um, yeah you, you can't just work out the calculation that way you know you could let, let's say you had a test and 10 people got scores and so you had 90, 90, 90, 90, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times, and then one person tanked it and got 15%. Okay? And I realise it's a bit unrealistic, but it gives you an idea. Now you could say, well, there are two different scores in this test, 15 and 90, add them together, Okay, and then divide by 2 to get an average score of 52.5. And say, well, the average for the test was 52.5. But you look at this data, and then you say, okay, well, that doesn't make actually any sense here, because almost everybody got 90% except one person who, who got a significantly lower average, a lower mark, which, if you do it this way, would bring the average down. But what you would actually need to do to work it out more fairly is that you would need to say, right, we'll add all of these together and then divide by 10. And that will give you a more accurate average, which would be only fractionally lower than 90%. Okay, and so that um, that's that's a more valid way for us to actually to calculate the average in this case. And this this is our, our way of doing that. Okay, saying that, okay, well, most of it is this one and then a smaller proportion is of each of those. Okay, and so when you work that out together, you get... A, an average molar mass of 24.37 atomic mass units. If you look at your periodic table, it is closest to magnesium, okay, which is listed as 24.31. But the idea is that this data is experimentally gathered so that there's a certain amount of um, uncertainty involved in that. 
Okay, let's have another uh, a look at another quick example. Okay, so looking at our next and final question. So we're looking at a scenario involving two isotopes of copper. Copper with a mass of 63 and copper with a mass of 65. Now you can have, just having a look at this notation here, reminding you of something you, you might not have um, seen for quite some time, of this way of actually representing a particular isotope. So we, have, we write the symbol, we write its mass number, so which is protons plus neutrons, up in the top left corner, and then its atomic number, which is the number of protons, in the bottom left corner. Okay, um, so I've done that for both of those. So seeing that for copper 63, we have a, a, an abundance of 69.1%. For copper um, 65, we've got an abundance of 30.9%. Okay, so just as before, we're going to convert these to decimals. Or you could, you could actually do them as percentages of, say, 69.1 divided by 100, and it would still work out exactly the same. Okay, and so we can do our average molar mass is equal to, um, so 63 atomic mass units times 0 0.691 plus 65 times 0 0.309. Okay. And so now just by gut feeling, you know that it's got to be between 63 and 65 because we've got a larger amount of this than this. It's probably going to be closer to this one. Okay, so you keep that in mind as you do your calculation. We crunch these numbers and we get an, a value of 63.62 uh, grams for every one mole, given that we're talking about molar mass. That's the, the units that's appropriate to use here. Okay, so we've used the abundance of the isotopes to calculate the molar mass by multiplying the percentage abundance as a decimal by the atomic mass unit of the isotope um, and working back from here. Now, another type of question you might come across, we won't work through an example now, is actually um, trying to get you to saying, right, well, if the average molar mass is this um, and the um, what are the percentage abundance of each of these particular isotopes? Okay, so you could say, um, Yep, that uh, you, you know. So let, let, let's let's kind of imagine this. So we've got sixty-three point six two grams for every mole is equal to sixty-three times the probability of x uh, plus sixty-five times one minus x. Okay, so we're so you know, thinking about that x will be expressed as a decimal. Okay, so 63x, if we expand this out, okay, so we get plus 65 um, minus 65x, grouping like terms. So we get 65 minus 2x is equal to 63.62. Okay, so we can move this over onto that side and then take this down over here. Okay. So we get 1.38, and once we divide that by 2, we get 0 0.69. And so therefore, the probability of 65 is 1 minus 0 0.69, which equals 0 0.31. Okay, and in rounded off terms, that those are the same proportions that we calculated up here. Okay, so you can see just from that quick little example that we can work from either abundances to calculate molar mass or we can work from molar mass to calculate abundances. Now, th that would be only as long as you've got um, two isotopes. You could never be asked a question of, of more than that because it, it, it gets much too complicated. Um, and, but, but yeah, but just demonstrating that that's the sort of thing that's possible. All right, thanks very much for watching. Um, time for a, a last little joke. So a gold atom walks into a bar. And the barman yells out, hey you! Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.